Obviously, Michaela's been back for a few weeks in California. Um, Julia, it's great to see you again. And um, Gary, it's Gary is back. It's been a long time, and it's good to see you. Um, and yeah, awesome. So uh, we did just have our uh, um, third community meeting. So we're meeting once a month on Mondays before the open mic at 5:30 to talk about the open mic and kind of you know collectively work on it to make it better. Um, so yeah, it's open to everyone. Um, first Mondays of the month at 5:30. Come here. And you know, take leadership on the open mic if you want to. Um, so, all right, I got some fresh produce for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's very fresh. I just wrote it like hours ago. Okay. Um, or I finished Thank it hours you. ago. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, real quick, what is pedagogy? Well, you tell me. What is what is pedagogy? Anyone? It's the domination over. No. Is it pedagogy? Demagogy. That's a demagogue. De demagogue. You're, you're, is it at shares of root. Close. Anyone know pedagogy? It's an important word. Does that have to do with teaching? Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's the science of teaching, basically, mm -hmm. or or education. So this poem starts with a quote. Education either functions as an instrument which is used to facilitate integration of the younger generation into the logic of the present system and bring about conformity, or it becomes the practice of freedom. The means by which men and women deal critically and creatively with reality and discover how to participate in the transformation of their world. Paulo Freire, Pedagogy of the Abyss. Pedagogy of the Poets. This is our classroom. The cipher, the circle, the open microphone to amplify our voices. This talking stick, this ritual, this space where we are all teachers and students and our conversation is the lesson. Our voices in dialogue, in concert, our testimonies meeting, alchemizing in the air. This is our eternal truth, our only theory, our sacred text, ever-changing. We are movement, evolution, truly human, being praxis. We practice the art of speaking and listening. The word and the silence are the legs on which we walk. The word to name and rename ourselves and the world. The silence to hear what the other is saying. This, the word to know, to defend, to dream, silence, the soil to receive these seeds. This is the garden, the ecosystem. This is the classroom, this is the stage. This is the altar on which we pray. This is our church and our town hall, our congress and congregational. This is our government, we are the legislators. This is our classroom, we are the educators. Capitalist pedagogy works top down. Study for the test, listen up, shut your mouth. Standardized curricula written by the state. Memorizing disconnected facts for a grade. Keep it compartmentalized, don't connect the dots. Teach them to be satisfied with poverty they got. Never use the word oppression, that's unpatriotic. Don't teach us in studies or you'll go to jail, got it? Water down the history, literature, social studies. I with creativity, we don't need critical thinkers, do we? In a system where the vast majority of jobs are to slave away for minimum wage, working for the boss, but something new is happening, even that is gone. Computers, robots, automate, creating a new problem. They don't even need us now, so they're closing all the schools, beefing up the police, Satan, changing all the rules, taking back the pensions, cutting welfare, closing clinics, putting dictatorial rule in the state of Michigan. If this shit ain't fucking fascist, then I don't know what is. Tyranny of corporations, slavery, Inc. Ram and his buddies up in City Hall huddle like a pack of vicious vultures to callously shutter up another public school till there's not one left. Sell them out one by one for charter paychecks. Packing 50 students in a class with old books, cutting back special ed, art and music go first, then as nurses, counselors, janitors, lunches, gross meat. Soon enough they're sitting in a room with no heat, but it's all about the kids, right? Cause Ram is on our side. It's not his fault we've gotten educational apartheid. It's gotta be the teachers. Yeah, them motherfuckers lazy. Better bust the unions up, cut their payment, raise fees. Call me crazy, but I think I see a pattern. They're taking away our basic needs while they keep getting fatter. Their politics are like the class of just monologue. 
turning schools into jail, soft holocaust. And all of us now have to make a decision. Keep trying to fix the broken capitalist system or reinvent ourselves, unite and fight for a new vision where everyone participates and everybody listens. Um, so yeah, real quick, I, I wrote that for the Tri-National Coalition on Education, which is happening this uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, it's like like radical educators and defenders of public education gathering from Mexico, the U.S., and Canada in Chicago. Um, so I'm really honored I'm going to get to perform that piece on Saturday for the, for the coalitions. Um, so yeah, uh, also one last thing was plug. Um, unrelated, but related, because it's, you know, all about revolution. Um, I, my hip-hop crew, The Idealists, just dropped our album, and actually I want to show it to you real quick, because it's beautiful. I'm super proud of it. My cousin Andy did the artwork. So we're selling these for 13 bucks, or, you know, like, if you only got 10 bucks, I'll take 10 bucks. Um, but yeah, check that out. And also we have an Indiegogo campaign to raise funds, because producing this shit was like freaking expensive. So um, talk to me about that, you can find it, the link to that on our Facebook page. Um, I would love, yeah, that's a great way to support us and there are some perks and stuff that you can check out or whatever. Um, but yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. One, one lap, one mic. Yeah! That's why we do what we do. Next up on the microphone, is our good man Lou in that kind of rhyme. So that's nice. Woo woo woo! Welcome up, Lou, everyone. Hey, the oldest paper peddler in charge. True. <laughs> so, this is a May Day issue of People's Tribune, so let me pass this around. Donations always welcome. I got it. Um, and we just passed May Day. And as you probably know, May Day began in Chicago in 1886 when uh, a number of people were killed by the police in a, uh, in a typical police riot that happened four days after a massive march in Chicago, 40,000 people for the eight-hour day. This was the time of day when immigrants from Eastern Europe, for example, wrote back to their friends, their family, saying, hey, we only have to work half a day here, 12 hours. So the eight-hour day was a big thing, a very important thing. Um, it's important to know also that that march and that rally in 1886 was led by immigrants, immigrants from a different part of the world than Mexico, but immigrants nevertheless, and the people who were hung as a result of the Haymarket tragedy, that is to say the radicals that they round, the police rounded up, the five people who were killed and laid to rest were all immigrants, and a crowd of it's estimated as many as half a million people watched the funeral procession, participated in the funeral procession, all the way from Wicker Park, where some of them lived, out to Forest Home, to Waldheim Cemetery, out on the west side. Long, long procession. So the piece I'm going to read is about, is written by uh, Eduardo Galliano. I'm not sure how many of you know Eduardo Galliano. If you don't, you should become acquainted with his name. He's written lots of books. The book that he's most famous for is Open Veins of Latin America, which uh, most people know now, the widest number of people now know, because Hugo Chavez presented a copy of it to the Barack Obama. I'm sure he never read it, but nevertheless, <coughs> it happened. Um, he's written a huge number of really wonderful literary books was a cartoonist before he became a writer. And this piece he wrote in 1991 about Haymarket. This is written in 1991. He was a little wrong. He was a little, you know, can I say, metaphorical. And took some literary license in what he wrote. 
first line is Chicago is full of factories. Well, that wasn't true then, it wasn't true now. But Chicago is full of factories, that's what it was known for. There are even factories right in the center of the city, around the world's tallest building. Chicago is full of factories. Chicago is full of workers. Arriving in the Haymarket district, I asked my friends to show me the place where the workers, whom the whole world salutes every May 1st, were hanged in 1886. It must be around here, they tell me, but nobody knows where. In 1991, there wasn't a monument in, the, in that square, but there is now. No statue has been erected in memory of the martyrs of Chicago in the city of Chicago. Not a statue, not a monolith, not a bronze plaque, nothing. May 1st is the only truly universal day of all humanity. The only day when all histories and all geographies, all languages and religions and cultures of the world coincide. But in the United States, May 1st is a day like any other. It's actually called Loyalty Day. On that day, people work normally. And no one, or almost no one, remembers that the rights of the working class did not spring whole from the ear of a goat, or from the hand of God, or the boss. And after my fruitless exploration of the Haymarket, my friends take me to the largest bookstore in the city. Well, it wasn't the largest bookstore, it was the Guild Books in Lincoln Park. And there, poking around, just by accident, I discovered an old poster that seems to be waiting for me, stuck among many movie and rock posters. The poster displays an African proverb. Until the lions have their own historians, histories of the hunt will glorify the hunter. Let's forget it. Wow. One of the things, last week I passed around a, uh, a sign-up sheet for those people who are interested in a political discussion group. We're going to have our first meeting on Wednesday here at Royal at 7.30. So anybody who's interested should come. Uh, I did email folks in advance and tried to settle on a date, but if you weren't here last week or you didn't sign up, don't feel bashful. You can come anyway. No problem. Thanks. All right.